My boy Shaq hit me up and he asked me how much oversampling is enough oversampling and he told me to only answer this if it's something I was passionate about. The thing was, I didn't realize how passionate I was about it till I started asking myself questions because I honestly don't know. Currently I use four times oversampling on standard clip and I don't use oversampling on my limiter for reasons I'll make clear later in this video. But when we dive into looking at the audible and practical differences it makes to these processes, will I end up changing my mind? Will you end up changing yours? You see, I've always, standard, always, always, always used four times oversampling on clippers, and that is to avoid aliasing distortion. I don't know why I settled on this number, I just did. So I've got some tests set up to produce the delta signal of the clipper at different oversamples, so we can intermittently play back the delta signal underneath a bed of noise to AB which oversampling rate does the resulting distortions disappear. So at what point is oversampling negligible because the aliasing distortion is not noticeable underneath a bed of music? Then after this, we're going to discuss the practicalities of limiters and oversampling and basically why, when, how, etc. So first I have this set up here. 14 kilohertz going through 10 decibels of hard clipping with no oversampling on. And we can see 14 kilohertz and all the aliasing distortion behind it. Then what we've got set up is two times oversampling. Now two times oversampling, there's less aliasing distortion. Then I've got four times set up, eight times set up, and then back to one. Now what I've got down here is the delta signal produced. So it removes that fundamental frequency. We can just hear the aliasing distortion and we can just have that at one, two, four, and eight. Now, what I've got here is a bed of music. So the signals, the original signals are at negative six RMS and the music is playing at negative six RMS. Now it's being gain staged. So they're both at negative 16 RMS. So they're playing an average amount of volume output. So the output of this original signal here is a negative six minus 10. So you sort of get an idea of what's going on there. That's negative 16. And the RMS of this music is negative 16. So what I want to do is I want to play the music. At the same time, I have the delta signal of the aliasing distortion coming through. And then we can discern, is it one times oversampling? Is it two times oversampling? Is it four times oversampling? At which point do we ignore our ears cannot pick up that aliasing distortion anymore? Now, this isn't a pure and simple test. This is just the start of looking into this. Then we'll look at some graphs in Plugin Doctor to get an understanding of why this is so. So let's currently mute that output. Let's play the music and uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, so clearly, clearly you need some oversampling. Now, without oversampling, the aliasing distortion of that sinusoidal waveform is very audible at the same RMS of the music. So what we're the, what I'm saying same RMS is the source of the signal I'm clipping is at the same source level of the music. Okay, and then I'm taking the delta signal and seeing, well, how much is of that distortion is actually present underneath that bed of music. Now, at one times oversampling, you can hear it. So you need to upsample clippers, but you have to also understand the context. This is 10 decibels of constant clipping. So there's quite a lot going on here. I'm just pushing this to the extreme so we can assess it. At two times, those higher frequencies are su subtly audible. At four times, it disappears. And at eight times, I, I wouldn't be able to pick the difference between these two. Now, in terms of getting interesting, let's just get standard clip up here. Because you know what we're going to do? We're going to go negative 10. Okay, so we're going to clip four decibels because in reality, in practice, like if I go to audio editor here, I'd only ever be taking four decibels off at the most. This peaks at negative 2.5 or so. And if I was using a clipper, I'd just be pulling out these peaks here with the clipper. So let's just say for 
practice sake, we're only clipping four decibels a signal. Now, at no oversampling, the harmonics, are, as in that aliasing distortion, not a harmonic, sorry, that's a, a intermodulation, not intermodulation, that's in harmonic, sorry, because it's not harmonic with the original source signal. That is only 20 decibels below the original, so it's audible, okay? Now, if we go two times over sampling, the nearest one is about negative 40 decibels below the source signal, so we can still hear the number two over sampling, or two times over sampling, but not as much. At 4x, there's still a little bit in the body, if we're not listening to it, we're just analyzing the tool, about 50 decibels below the source signal, but it's when we get to eight times over sampling that to hear something that's 60 to 70 decibels below the source signal is almost impossible. So with clippers, my advice is if you're clipping more than four, five, six decibels off your peaks, four times is safe enough. Four times over sampling is definitely safe enough. Um, eight times over sampling is I've got extra CPU to kill. Why the fuck not? I think I'm going to lean the side of in mastering of going eight times over sampling here only because you can and there's no reason against it. I think when I'm mixing though, the CPU load, if I've got multiple clippers going on, all being eight times over sampled, it's quite heavy. Four times is perfectly fine. As we heard, that aliasing distortion underneath the uh, the mixed signal, or the music signal, you couldn't hear that distortion. And that was a constant distortion. That wasn't intermittent either. Now, there can be a case made either way to say, oh, you know, because it's constant, it's not really reflective of an actual uh, aliasing distortion from a track. But you also have to remember contextually how hard are you pushing your clipper in mastering. You're not doing 10 decibels of clipping at any one stage like I was here. You might be doing two, three, four at the max. So four times over sampling is more than enough. Eight times an overkill. Anything over that, you're just wasting CPU, like seriously wasting CPU. Now, let's keep it moving on because uh, something I said was limiters. Now, do I oversample my limiters? No. And the reason being because they do not produce enough distortions. Like if you're doing two decibels of limiting, okay, and you've set up your attack and release time properly, you are not producing enough distortions for there to be audible aliasing downstream. Like there, there just isn't. So I don't oversample my limiters. But something I do do, which I think is really important, is true peak limiting. Now, the reason why I prefer true peak limiting over oversampling, now if you read ITU BS1, 770, technical document, TD11770, or BS1770, where it's got the standard measurements for tracking true peak, which is what limiters actually use. Okay, so they go four times over sampling is the standard for measuring true peak. Um, what it's actually doing is it is the, and I've got this verified for the maximizer um, from Isotopes team, the true peak limiting on the side chain, it oversampled this side chain signal. So what happens here is a limiter will read this signal and it will only start limiting or only be triggered by this sample here to limit. Nothing above here is going to trigger the limiter. Whereas if we oversample this, so this is at 48, so if we sample this to 96, let's render that. The limiter is actually going to read this peak value here. Okay, and that's a big difference because the... That new peak value is 7 decibels, and the old peak value was 8.5. So it's 1.5 decibels more accurate, okay? So it's actually tracking a more analog-like waveform. I think true peak limiting for the ballistics of limiters are much better. Um, oversampling is not necessary because you're adding filters into the chain, which you may, may not need. It may, may not change the sound for a distortion which isn't present. And I can show you that here, because you're probably wondering, yeah, Nick, I don't know about that whole aliasing distortion business um, with the limiters. So let's actually get some limiters up. Let's get L2 and then I'll get maximizer up. Hey, L2, where are you, mate? There we are. You gotta love, like I've got a hundred freaking clippers running at the moment. I should just make this all inactive because I just got all this shit running all being oversampled. And it's like, my computer's like, yeah, Nick, I don't like you too much. So let's go turn the true peak limiter off. Let's get some gain going into this bad boy. All right. Now, 
those distortions there, and that's that's because those distortions there, negative 60 dB, okay? That's not really a lot of aliasing distortion because there's not many harmonics being produced. Make the release time faster, the attack time slower, you get a bit more, but that's not a practical setup you're ever using. You go into all round mode, yeah, you're going to have aliasing distortion, but you're never going to have the attack open that far or the release that that uh, this fast. So you can manage that. You can oversample it a bit and it will help a lot. But the thing is, the reality is you're never ever releasing 10 milliseconds. If you're releasing that fast and you're producing that much distortion because you're doing 11 decibels of gain reduction, you've got other issues with your mix. So a more practical thing where you might be limiting, let's say, four decibels there. That's how much is... No, no, four decibels. You know, you're going to have a little bit of aliasing distortion, but you're going to slow down that release and manage that. You might oversample a bit, but I'm not using Pro L2 anyway because I don't think it's that crash hold of a limiter compared to the maximizer. But anyway, thing is, the true peak limiting, you produce more accurate results. You're able to track the waveform way more accurately. If I just go redo there, um, you actually get to track better sample values. Now, if we go into, where are we? Hello, hello. Um, the maximizer, you'll actually notice there's no aliasing distortion, period. Doesn't matter how hard I push it. Um, I think it could already be internally oversampled, but I have a theory of what it might be doing otherwise. And if anybody has any physical... Why is that not compatible? Okay. If anybody has some physical sort of documentation or something they can reference or bill from Isotope, if you're watching this, let me know, is the maximizer being oversampled? Because I can push this quite hard and I've got no hum like aliasing distortion there. I can make it super fast and there are. I make it super slow and it's not. And my theory, my theory with this, because even if I go to something like clipping, okay, you've got a little bit of distortions there, but nothing, it's not until you go down there that it really starts to happen. My theory is because the IRC algorithm is optimizing the ballistics in terms of the attack and release times. It's optimizing that to produce the least amount of distortions or finding the attack and release times with the lowest distortion score based on the psychoacoustic modeling. We're avoiding a lot of the distortions that would naturally get in the master and or using these limiters anyway. So here's the thing. I don't oversample my limiters. If maximize is oversampling internally, cool. If it's not cool, I don't care. What am I concerned about with my limiters? True peak, very important. And you can actually see those distortions go away when you hit true peak. See, very important true peak. Um, no need to oversample them. Your clippers, you want to oversample. That's just plain and simple. You want to oversample. What Two times oversampling is not enough. Four is perfectly fine. Eight, probably an overkill, but four times is where it's at. Anyway, I hope that helped you out. And until next time, take care.